We're in Yarmouth on the Isle of Wight to test the new Galleon 460 Fly and it has a rather unique selling point in the form of this pair of folding platforms. They are an option but you'd be mad to buy this boat and not spec them and this is the smallest boat that Galleon will fit the platforms to. On board it has three cabins, two of which are en suite and you can have it with shaft drives or IPS and prices start from £482,000 plus VAT. Where do we start with this cockpit? I think I've already found my favourite spot on the boat, sat on one of these two bar stools, close to the galley, close to the fridge, great place to sit for a drink before you go out for dinner. But there's so much more to it than just that little spot there, because these doors are fantastic as well. They slide right the way across, so you've already got a fantastic link between the cockpit and the saloon. And then when you walk around the side, you have this two-way bench here, which means that when the windows are shut, people can sit and face into the boat. But on a day like today, you can open that window right up and then people can sit facing out. And these platforms out on the water, absolutely fantastic at anchor. To get everything set up like it is now, it's probably about 10 minutes by the time you've got the railings in and the windows back. But to put the platforms down themselves, it's about 10 seconds each. And then you can use them to jump off. The kids can sit with their feet swinging over the edge. At anchor, it really would come into its own. The platforms use a remarkably simple system. It's essentially a set of hinges and then at this end you have a hydraulic ram. It's really quite foolproof. Now, you can't have them on the lowest powered engines, the IPS 600s, uh, the D6435 shafts, just because the extra weight, it's uh, not going to work particularly well when you have those lower horsepower engines. But on the larger uh, horsepower engines, you can have them. And I've got to be honest, I thought they would feel like a bit of a gimmick, but the more time you spend on board, the more you realise how much space they give you that you simply wouldn't have. I think they're pretty fantastic. The only thing I would say is that they could probably afford to fit some railings on that top section there. You see now you haven't got a handhold. There'd be no issue in just adding a little bit of stainless. Even when it's folded down, it's not going to be an issue. But when they're up like this, it would be useful to have something to grab onto as you walk past. Right, off we go then. So this particular boat, has got the shaft drive option. It's got a pair of 550 horsepower Volvos. And to be honest, given the amount of bank they have and the fact that you have a bow and a stern thruster, maneuvering this boat, even without the joystick, is incredibly easy. And actually, because there's so much glass in here, it's really easy to see where you're going. Even though you've got this big mully in here, there's enough glass behind you that you can really easily see off both shoulders and it's that dead easy to manoeuvre, even from down here. I said this boat's got a pair of 550 horsepower engines today we've got a top speed just shy of 30 knots but actually that feels appropriate for the boat it's heavy for a 46 foot it's 22 tons it feels extremely planted and very solid it's calm here in the solent but out by the needles we had some more waves about and it really solidly plows through the rough stuff it feels very comfortable nice and solidly built and the hull really looks after you when it begins to kick up the handling Again, it's no sports boat, but it turns keenly enough. It loses a little bit of speed when you really turn hard. The bow tends to dig in a little bit, but actually for the type of cruising boat it is, this is perfectly enjoyable. And the driving position down here is really good as well. I'm sat right back in the seat here and I've got the throttles and the wheel within the easy reach. Shorter skippers may find they're perching on the edge of the seat a little bit, but as I've said before, same as berthing, the view here is really good. I haven't had to touch the trim tabs. It's got Bennett tabs. I haven't had to touch them to get the running attitude right. She trims at a really nice angle and 22 knots really is the cruising sweet spot. One thing this helm and the entire dash area in fact is sorely lacking is cubby space. 
there's really nowhere to put a mobile phone or your sunglasses or a drink. There's no cup holder this side. There's one all the way over there, but there isn't one for the captain here. And though my glasses are propped up there, okay, on a rough day, they'd be sliding around all over the place. So given the amount of room there is at this helm, they need to find somewhere to find some better quality storage spaces. Smart thinking continues up here on the foredeck. Now seating of this nature is nothing new on a boat of this size, but what's nice about the 460s is that you have backrests, so if you're gonna spend a bit more time here, it's much more comfortable. And all of these backrests flip forward into the lockers below them so that the view isn't impeded from the helm. There's also the option to have these forward sections on runners so you can slide them outboard to give you even more space in the middle. The flybridge is a good size on the 460 and there's a nice split between, albeit quite low slung seating and dedicated sunbathing space. The upper helm, it's a nice clean design, it looks good and the angle of this dash part here means, as opposed to downstairs, you can actually stow things reasonably easy. Though again, there's no dedicated cup holder or any enclosed storage, which is a bit of a shame. The other thing I'm not too keen on is this steering wheel. Looks like it's come straight over an arcade game. Now the interior is a bit more formulaic compared to that radical exterior. Especially in this particular colour scheme, it's walnut, it's cream, it's pretty safe, but there is a bewildering array of different choices from carpets, textures, colours, and surfaces, you can change it all if you don't like it. The layout, it's simple, but it works well, and you've got big windows either side, so the amount of natural light in here is superb. Single piece windscreen helps with that as well. This is a nice sociable area, and your television pops up from this section just here. And it wouldn't be a galleon if we didn't have the rather chintzy consolation ceiling panel. But let's go and have a look at the cabins. The three cabin layout down here is fixed, you can't have any different configurations. So you have a twin bunk bed cabin to starboard, it's pretty good actually. The lower bunk feels a bit coffin like, top bunk nice and spacious though and you've got a decent amount of storage. And this VIP cabin is really impressive, they've got huge amounts of glazing in the deck head so it's really bright, nice big windows either side and hanging storage either side too, plus ensuite access to the day heads. Something else you notice down here is the quality of the woodwork. All the doors click shut with a really nice high quality feel and the woodwork is really really top drawer. But the best bit of the accommodation is the master cabin. What's most remarkable about this master cabin given the size of the boat is the amount of headroom. Yes there are some dips in the floor and some intrusions overhead but someone of six foot can make their way all the way around the bed and they won't have to stoop and crucially there's enough room over the bed that you can sit up and read really comfortably. All of the storage is on this side of the cabin, you've got cupboard storage and your hanging storage and then as you walk in you have your own ensuite. This is a good boat even without the balconies. It's well built, well priced and it goes well out at sea. But in truth the balconies give the boat something that rivals cannot compete with and they offer you space that otherwise you simply wouldn't have. Galleon is aware that to draw people away from the more established brands they have to do things slightly differently. With the 460 Fly, they've done just that, and it's certainly paid off. <laughs>